guys, my name is Vegan Tiger Cat or Ocean Pancake and today I'm talking to you uh, bringing back the old series called Instructor Chats with Cat. So as some of you guys may know, I am a Patty scuba diving instructor, technically was one because I'm not recertified for this year because of everything that's happening. But I wanted to share some of my experience and some of my knowledge on how to help you in your scuba diving instructor journey. Now, just a little bit of backstory. I became a diving instructor when I was 18 years old and um, I have been teaching diving ever since. I was, uh, I began my scuba diving journey when I was 12, 13. So by the time I became an instructor, I had uh, dived in over five different countries, lots of different conditions. I've dived with so many people and really grew up in the water. So at 18, I felt ready and equipped to be a diving instructor. However, day one came of teaching my course, my first course, and I was terrified. Now, I wanna give you some tips on how to make your progress process uh, into being a full-time instructor a little bit easier. So here are a couple tips from me to you. Number one, believe in yourself. You know your stuff. Now, even when you're a dive master, you have studied so much. You have so much experience. If you have done the course correctly and if you've done all the courses and actually taken the time to read the books and stuff, read the books and stuff. It's not just, you know, to pass an exam like at school. It's to ensure that everyone is um, as, it's to make sure your students remain as safe and well-educated as possible. You have all this knowledge. So the divers which are coming to learn how to dive from you, they don't know anything and they're gonna trust you with everything you say. And you'll be worried, hey, I won't know how to answer their questions, but you do. It will click from the back of your head. Most of the questions that you're gonna be dealing with at the beginning level are also beginner level questions. So they're things you will definitely be able to answer. Things like, how do I put my wetsuit on? How do I pick the right mask? How do I set up my equipment? Why is it important that we, you know, check our dive computer? Things like that, things that you can easily answer. So trust in your education and your training and you will be okay. Tip number two, you would have gone through so much training uh, and you would have learned how to teach, you would have done your IDC by this point, uh, but still you're a little unsure do it with a buddy. So I don't know if this is possible in all dive shops, but I truly believe once you become certified, especially if you've done a lot of the process with one company or even your instructor development course with a company, you can ask them, hey, can I sit in on some of the courses with other instructors and team teach for the first couple of courses? This way you get to learn from a professional, be there, be certified, be able to help in all the ways they may need. They may even let you take the lead in a couple of sections and it gives you really good firsthand experience while having someone there to kind of have your back. Now, when I first started teaching, I think I did three to three, maybe three courses with someone else being as the main instructor. And then over the years, I have also taught many courses where I was the main instructor and I had new instructors helping me out. And it's such an incredible thing to now be able to help new instructors and to share my knowledge because my instructors helped me so much. And yeah, just trust, trust your colleagues and be honest with the dive shops. Because sometimes while there is an aspect of fake it till you make it, you also want to make sure that you are providing your students an education which is going to keep them safe and is not going to cause any dive accidents. Ooh, before I forget, I also wanted to do a shout out to Leaf Shave, who is sponsoring this video. Thank you so much, Leaf Shave. These guys are a plastic-free alternative for a razor for men and for women. You can use it 
for years because you just switch out the blades. There is absolutely no plastic in it. So help yourself, help your wallet and help the planet by investing into plastic free shaving. Three, if you don't know the answer to a question, you can just say so. You can honestly say, I don't know, but let me find out for you. Now, after this point, you can either go to a colleague, you can go to your boss, you can text your friend, you can go online, you can check the Patty Dive Manual, or check with your course director. It depends what kind of relationships you have with your instructors. However, considering most Dive Master and Instructor courses are quite like mentor-mentee programs, there is probably someone in your life that you can ask for help, even if it's remotely. I remember the first time one of my students actually had a dive emergency happen and she had to be taken to the hospital, I cried. And at that time I called my mentor, which I hadn't seen for a couple of years at that point. And yeah, I was totally honest, cried on the phone and he said some very calming words. He says, this is a process everyone goes through. It's not my fault if I did everything right, if I followed the book. If you guys want to hear the whole story, let me know and I can share uh, that story. It's quite scary. They're okay. The lady is very healthy now. She's all good. But in the moment, as an 18 year old, it was pretty freaky. So yeah, pick up that phone, call your colleague, and then come back to the student and answer the question. Side note, make sure you to come back to the student and answer the question. If you say you're gonna do something, make sure you do it, stay consistent. Actually, that's step four, stay consistent. If you want your students and your colleagues and your boss to develop faith in you, and if you want to become a good scuba diving instructor, you need to be <laughs> you need to stay consistent. If you do a briefing, make sure that the dives you do with your students follow that briefing exactly. If they don't, make sure in your briefing to say, hey, unless the, cu the currents change or I do whatever signal you may want to do, um, then we're going to do something else. Prepare your students for any eventuality. When uh, they're getting marked uh, on performance, make sure you really set out what you are looking for. If you are a new instructor, write stuff down. It is not at all embarrassing to have a piece of paper to refer to, to just make sure you check off all the points. And that is step five, write it down, okay? It took me a while to get the hang of everything I was going to say. And in your instructor development course, you will learn about how to teach. You will have these notes and notes and notes about how to answer every single question. Now it goes into way too much detail for every single question that is on the slideshow or in the exam. However, you want to use that structure for your overall course. You want to make sure you give those real life examples. You want to kind of give, well, you want to give an introduction, you want to give those real life examples, you want to give them the correct answer and give them a way that they can remember it. Write it down. Basically, have notes with you. Even as diving instructors on boats for years, you'll see people have clipboards which go through the daily briefing. Is that because they don't know it? No, it's just to make sure that all the customers are safe, you're safe, you have followed every single point. So there is absolutely no shame to write everything down to make sure that you do your absolute best job you can. Number six, I didn't do this and I didn't actually tell my first dive course that they were my first students until the end of the course. Now, as an 18 year old little blonde girl, I was quite, unsure of myself in many ways. Uh, for any females out there, I'm sure you would have experienced uh, sexism, especially in the workplace. And unfortunately, in scuba diving, it is quite a male-dominated sport, although women are coming up. But especially here in Australia, in non-tourism heavy areas, it's quite male-dominated. So I felt quite insecure, unsure of myself. I didn't know if the older people would respect me. So I didn't tell them how new I was. I didn't lie, but I would say I've been diving for six years. So 
People are going to ask you how long you've been a diving instructor and you should feel confident enough to say that you are quite new at this. However, I didn't. It made me feel more secure. Students were any worse for wear and at the end I told them and they were so lovely. I will never forget this. They actually got me a bottle of champagne and some cookies, um, some Ferrero Rocher. Uh, candies as a thank you and I will never forget that course it was really deep and special and meaningful and if you guys want to hear more about um, my first couple of courses and some of the mistakes I made uh, then I can do a whole other video on that so what it comes down to is be yourself trust that you know what you're doing don't be afraid to ask for help reach out to your colleagues do the research if someone asks you a question, stay consistent and be honest with your students. They're going to appreciate it. To be a diving instructor, it changed my life. It was one of the most incredible experiences of my life, but it is a lot of hard work. So please don't undervalue that and stay up to date with all the things that you need to stay up to date with. Stay up to date with the PADI seminars, with the theory, make sure you know what you're doing, make sure you know how to answer those questions because you are teaching a sport which is fun and exciting and amazing, but it, your name is going to be on those people's cards forever. So you want to make sure that you do your absolute best and um, yeah, that you make sure that they go out into the world as knowledgeable and as safe divers. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope it didn't get too serious and dark. I love sharing my experience of scuba diving. I love sharing uh, what I've learned and just talking about it has made me really miss it. But if you want to help me continue the work I'm doing, which is ocean conservation, sustainability, it would mean the world to me if you became a patron or got yourself a Plastic is the Killer t-shirt, support the podcast or just leave me a very nice or not even that nice comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.